Thank you for speaking with me this morning. It's just about 7.30 here Central Time. We know you have to do these interviews very early because you're right. headed headed to court. Uh, right. But with the, the time- Biden, Biden trials, yeah, that's right. The, the, the time we have, um, just wanted to ask you about Minnesota. You came within uh, one and a half points in 2016 to winning this state, uh, but Republicans haven't won a statewide race here since 2006. Why do you think you can turn the tide in November, Mr. President? Because I think, number one, Biden is so bad. He's the worst president in the history of our country. He's destroying our country. When you look at the borders where millions of people are coming in and tremendous hundreds of thousands from prisons and mental institutions and terrorists, they're pouring into our country totally unchecked. You look at that, you look at the fact that he wants to quadruple your taxes, and will, which will be a total killer to the economy. You look at his horrible inflation, which we're going to get down. We're going to reduce energy prices for your state. But for most of the states, by more than half, we're going to be able to reduce them, I believe, by 50 percent at least. And that's going to bring down inflation and we're going to have we're going to get back to normal. People are being decimated by inflation. Now, when you look at the mistakes, the Afghanistan situation where not the pulling out, I was pulling out, but we're going to pull out with pride and dignity and strength. When you look at the way this guy did, it was the most embarrassing day in the history of our country. We've never had a day so embarrassing, in my opinion. And that's what led to Ukraine and Russia, because they looked at us, they said, this is no longer a strong country. And all of a sudden, you have Ukraine attack, you have China making noises, and then you have October 7th with Israel, which would have never happened if I were president. I want to ask you about law and order in this country. Law enforcement around the country in this area are under attack. We've lost nine first responders in less than a year. Eight police officers have been criminally charged while doing their jobs in Hennepin County in the last four years. What would you do to push back against anti-law enforcement sentiment? You have to give them back their respect and dignity. You have to bring back the law enforcement the way it was. And you'll have every once in a while, very rarely, you, you have a bad apple, and I fully understand that. But you can't let what's happened to your state. Your state has, it's out of control. If I didn't let things happen a certain way, you would have had Minneapolis. This would have burned down to the ground. It was terrible what they were doing. If you look at what happened during that time, and we were very, I got awards for saving certain areas and saving certain towns because your politicians didn't want to act. They were unwilling to act. And it's really up to them. It's not up to me. And I wish I did it even earlier. And now I will do it earlier. But you have to give back the police their dignity, their respect. You have to give them, give them back the authority. They know who the criminals are. They see it. But they're not allowed to do their job. And your state is a great example of it. You have people that are just out of control, and you have to stop it. You have to have law and order. You mentioned this earlier, but the immigration court backlog in Minnesota is at a record high, increasing 126% in three years. But meanwhile, Democrats, uh, some Democrats in this state, want to turn Minnesota into a sanctuary state. What will you do to end the country's illegal immigration crisis? And will you consider carrying out mass deportations? You're going to have to have mass deportations. The country can't stand it. The country can't handle it. And sanctuary cities are basically a sanctuary for criminals because they're coming in at levels and they go right into these sanctuary cities and they're protected. And they can be murderers from other countries. They come out of jails and they come out of mental institutions. And then they go into a sanctuary city and you can't do what you have to do. It's a very, very sad situation and very sad what's happened to your state. Your state is out of control. And it's this radical left philosophy that cannot be allowed to continue. If it does, the country is just not going to be a country anymore. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar was just recently endorsed again by the Democratic Party here in Minnesota at, over a competitive primary challenger. She's now facing another censure resolution in Congress for her comments targeting Jewish students during a trip to Columbia. Mr. President, do you believe she's serving uh, the people of Minnesota's 5th District well? Well, she hates Jewish people and she hates Israel. There's no question about that. And I think she does a terrible job. But perhaps there's a little group or a small group in there that likes her and likes that philosophy. But it's not right and it's not good for our country. Uh, she's a hater. And she hates at levels that rarely seen before. And, you know, she may be popular in a certain district or a certain area, but I will tell you nationwide, they're looking at what's happening in her area and, frankly, in your state. 
it's so unfortunate what's happening. I have the endorsement of just about everybody on the Repu everybody on the Republican side. I'm going to be there tomorrow night. We're having a big, a big get together, to put it mildly. And Tom Emmer, who's a terrific guy and a real leader, is uh, one of the people that are leading it, and it's going to be a lot of fun. But they want law and order. They want respect for police and respect for our military and respect for our fire men and women and all of these things. Our country has just lost its way. It's rudderless now. And you look at what's happening. If if we didn't go in, I mean, if seriously, take a look at some of the things that happened over the last few years in your state. These things should never happen. And a lot of it's based on hatred. I know many people looking forward to your visit here tomorrow. Mr. President, want to be respectful of your time. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.